Ahoy shipmates, it's August here, back from the Annapolis Boat Show, where I had a real blast, and uh, it was such a pleasure to meet so many of you listeners in, in person, that was very special to me, so thank you to everyone who came to our events and stopped by our booth, it's um, really fun to meet the people who listen and who don't recognize your face, only your voice. Several uh, people told me that they were very surprised by my appearance without providing more details. Not sure how to uh, interpret that, but it was very, very nice to meet you all. So I'm back in Norway now, currently in the process of winterizing Isbjörn, and um, I've started a bunch of projects to get her ready for next season. Lots of small little things on the uh, interior. She'll have new sails. That's going to be very exciting. And I'm also finally giving up on the iPads and we're installing a chart plotter in the cockpit. So those are all really fun. There's also um, a lot of not so fun maintenance going on. Yesterday, as I went to change the uh, impeller on the engine, the head came off one of the screws for the housing plate cover. So I had some very tricky screw extraction um, on my hands this afternoon. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to our podcast and uh, thanks for sharing your stories with me, how how you listen. I'm now imagining all of you guys out there commuting, doing boat work, painting, um, all sorts of stuff. And uh, it's a real pleasure to, uh, to keep you all company. On the Wind is presented by Forbes Horton Yachts. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a boat, Forbes is your man. We have collaborated with Forbes for years and many 59 North staff and crew have bought their boats through Forbes and I have never heard a bad word. Not only will you help you get a good boat at a good price, but I guarantee that you will learn a lot in the process. Forbes is a big sailor himself, so he is one of us, so to speak, and uh, he knows what's important and what's not. Forbes have a ton of great boats listed himself, but he can help you buy any boat from anywhere as a buyer's broker. As a buyer's broker, Forbes will be working for you and can act entirely conflict-free since he's not representing the seller. He'll also split the commission with the seller as compensation. So this is a very, very smart thing to do if um, you're buying any boat anywhere. Check out Forbes listings and get in touch with him at ForbesYachts.com. That's Foxtrot, Oscar, Romeo, Bravo, Echo, Sierra, Yachts.com. Big thanks to Forbes for sponsoring the podcast. On the Win is also presented by SailTies. SailTies is a free app for Android and iOS that makes it easy to record all of your sailing experiences in one place. A digital record of all your voyages, certificates, crew, vessels, and clubs. No more adding up miles in a paper book that can be easily lost, which is two taps. SailTies generates a beautiful memory of each trip that is fun to share with family and friends. The app runs in the background without internet connection and it uses very little battery. Co-founder Tom explains, For us, sailing is about genuine real-life experiences together in nature, not being glued to your phone when a dolphin swims past. SailTice is free to use with an optional SailTice Plus subscription to unlock even more from your voyages, including automatic historic weather data and grouping voyages into collections. Check out SailTice.net or look for it in the App Store. Thanks to SailTice for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Welcome to On the Wind, the podcast about offshore sailing. I'm your host, August Sandberg. Ispion's rig towers over the other sailboats in her winter marina, but at the far end of the pontoons there is one mast that makes even her spar look tiny. It belongs to a veteran of ocean racing built as Toshiba for the last ever Whitbread round the world race in 1997. She's now under the command of skipper Morten Landmark, who uses it for family cruising and to humble the Shetland race fleet every year.
Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, Morten, thank you so much for uh, inviting me aboard your uh, very, very interesting uh, boat. So yeah. it's, uh, it's good to <laughs> good to see you. We've been talking about doing this for uh, for a while, so it's nice yeah. to be here finally. Yeah, it's nice to have you on board. Uh, it's always fun to to show the to show the boat to people, and uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's a hot conversation topic. <laughs> <laughs> when I, wherever I park it, so uh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, always some, uh, someone who wants to have a conversation. So it's a very social boat in that in that uh, sense. I bet. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it stands <laughs> out really. Uh, yeah. So do you want to tell us uh, just what what boat she is? And uh, yeah, it's a Volvo Ocean Racer from '97, far design, and it was in the Volvo Ocean Race as Toshiba. In right. uh, in ninety seven, ninety eight, I think, and I cool. think it was in the two thousand and two race as Seb, but I'm not sure about it. Oh, okay, uh, but the but the sticker on the front says Volvo Ocean Race two thousand and two. So yeah, I I'm assuming it was there as Seb, right? Um, but there's been some discussion if if maybe it was the sister ship that sailed because I think Seb had two boats oh yeah uh, so maybe maybe this one just got the sticker and the other one actually went i'm not sure right it's, well, that's, it's been uh, around once at least okay uh, yeah, that was the thing that they used to do back when they had the open classes right they would build two boats and then match race them against each other to find the fastest i'm not sure if if there was ever two toshibas that i'm not sure of that okay maybe there was i don't know yeah, I think some, at yeah. least some of the teams, I think, used to do that, which um, made the made the campaigns uh, very expensive, of course. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It but it was uh, quite an expensive boat to build, I've heard. Mm. Um, but uh, I got it pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that was yeah, like uh, eighty. You know, that's um, yeah. She's she's getting on in on in age. How, yeah, um, uh, you won't, you won't, uh, you won't be able to find any wear. It's uh, she's like new. It's uh, she. She I, looks I really mean, good. The, I gotta yeah, say, yeah, it's it's. There's nothing in here that can be worn. So uh, I guess that's oh. the, <laughs> <laughs> it's empty inside. Good point. Yeah, it's, that uh, was just a just a shell, really. Yeah, I mean, you, you've yeah. you've added some some uh, um, some modifications yeah. here that we're gonna talk about, but a, bu- a uh, couple of bunks and uh, a floor. A floor, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> really <laughs> nice, like hardwood floors uh, in here. You don't see that on a lot of these yeah, uh, hardcore I, sailors. So. I just uh, I you know it was a little bit uncomfortable what with uh, walking on the outer hull yeah. uh, with the water splashing around so mm. i put this in it's a little bit more comfortable when the when the, when there is a little bit of water and in, in the in the bottom yeah so. it's a really yeah. uh really nice upgrade and it kind of smells yeah. i smell the wood yeah as well. you can smell there's a bit yeah. of a mountain cabin smell yeah, it's, in ac- here, which it's is, actually uh, like uh patio like uh uh, terrace, uh, f- what do you call it? Like uh, Trassebourg. Yeah, yeah, like the yeah patio. Uh, yeah, l- yeah, boards, like I just, guess. Uh, yeah. Just uh, oiled the patio boards that I've. <laughs> it looks great. It looks yeah. fantastic. Yeah. They should they should be able to take uh, the punishment. I think. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's really nice. Yeah. But how did you? Um, you know, I guess I guess the question is why did you buy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why did yeah. you buy like an old race boat like this? It's oh, a I, pretty, I, it's a pretty niche product. So uh, yeah, I I I just uh, I I basically bought it because I came across it, and when I saw it, I was like, "Holy shit! Can I get this? <laughs> this is this is amazing! I, I never thought I would have anything like this." This is uh, ten times better than any other boat I looked at. My missus don't necessarily agree. She likes, you know, <laughs> cooking and comfort and stuff. Yeah. But I can cook on my little uh, gas uh, stove, and uh, and this is way more comfortable than any other boat when the waves are two meter high. That's true. Uh, yeah. So it's a comfortable boat, and also uh, 
to my missus I said well we'll we'll arrive a lot earlier to you port so uh, you'll have more comfort when you're uh, you know you can go to a hotel and take a shower that's a great well, that's yeah. a great argument yeah, like yeah. the time spent yeah. at sea is uh, will be a lot shorter yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. very nice very nice well uh, well played well played yeah. um, but you you were so you were you were in the market for a boat you were looking yeah. For, yeah, for, for something yeah I was looking for like for the 50 footer for the family right and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I remember you telling me this when we were because uh, we originally met at this um, uh, ISAF offshore yeah, this, uh, safety course safety course yeah, that, then I'd already bought it yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah, right yeah, but you yeah. I, I think you, <laughs> you, you told me the story and I uh, yeah I was looking for just like a Bavaria or something <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's uh, where I remember but this was cheaper than the Bavaria there you go. Yeah, so Crazy. I was like, "Holy shit, can I get this for that <laughs> price?" That's a uh, that's a no brainer. Yeah, yeah. But that's. Uh, I also I also went and looked at a couple of other boats, and they all had like issues with uh, with the lamination and water intrusion and in the, in the railing. Yeah. And uh, all that stuff, and uh, the German who sold me this boat, he said, "There's not one single piece of wood." anywhere on this book <laughs> yeah. so I was like yeah that sounds good that's yeah. uh, <laughs> that's a, a good good thing but yeah. that's that's amazing that you went from looking at like Bavaria 40 foot Bavarias and then you ended up with yeah. a, a, a Volvo Ocean 60 it's a little deeper keel on this one but you know the yeah. the Bavaria has two meters maybe maybe two and a half even and this is big enough yeah this is four so yeah it's a uh, it's it, it it does have some um challenges with some ports i guess yeah but uh, i'm usually find a spot yeah so, yeah cool is uh <laughs> do you have any problems with uh bridges yeah not so far. <laughs> Just avoid them. Yeah. No how, how, t- how tall is the mast? It's 29 meters. 29? Yeah. Okay. At the top. So yeah. I can pass the most important bridge, uh, which is the bridge out from my home port. Yeah. And <laughs> so uh, that's 32 meters. So that's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you... Uh, how did you find it or where did you find it or was this I just I just went on Google and I, because I wanted to buy uh, like I said like uh, Bavaria or something and I looked at some boats in Norway and then I I sort of got the idea oh, maybe it's it's good to buy something abroad I looked at some uh, old charter boats down in uh, the Mediterranean and then I just came across this one and I was like Hold up! Wait a minute. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, uh, I, I asked my uncle. I said, uh, "I'm, I'm considering this old uh, Volvo Ocean Racer that's for sale." And he was like, "Yeah, you, so you got like a couple of million bucks to spend." <laughs> I'm like, "No, it's actually quite cheap." He was like, "Yeah, whatever." And hmm. then I just flew to Germany and looked at it, and uh, I loved it, and I bought it. <laughs> I was like, so cool. I, when I, when after I looked at it, I was like, "Holy fuck! Is this really for sale at this price?" Hmm. I was like, "Yeah, I, I, well, I'll." Uh, I didn't want them to think that I was too enthusiastic. Oh like, yeah, you gotta play your cards. Yeah, I was uh, like, right. yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it a bit. I, I think I'll, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. But inside, I was like, "Yeah, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! How much? Can I ask how much you paid? I I paid sixty five uh, thousand euros. So it's, okay, uh, it's quite cheap. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's a lot of lot of boat for that's um, a lot of boat for the money. Yeah, yeah. And I got like uh, six or seven sails. Just the sails are worth the money, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, it, and uh, they really took good care of it. It it was from speed sailing. Uh, in uh, in Rostock, and uh, they are really professional. Uh, okay. I mean, amazing guys, and uh, and they they had uh, kept uh, all the maintenance up, and everything was just 
looking perfect. Uh, when I looked at it, it was inside a hang- hangar with uh, the rig down and everything. Huh. And they had they had uh, just done the anti fouling and everything was perfect. So oh, nice. it was like uh, wow, really good uh, people. And uh, yeah, I I was a little bit amazed that they would sell it uh, at that price. But I think it's got something to do with the the depth of the keel is not really very suitable as a recreational craft in Germany, Denmark and down there. Yeah. But in Norway it's like deep fjords everywhere so you can go ev- everywhere and in Norway with this boat wherever you could go in Denmark yeah uh, like uh, wherever you can go with a like a, a 1 meter keel you can go with this in Norway because True. it's uh, it's so deep non issue yeah yeah but in Denmark you would have to like Oh, let's go to the beach. I uh, <laughs> anchor like uh, five ten miles, miles out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. good for Norway, I think. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good point. I guess it is. Um, you know, a, 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 a tough boat to sell. I mean, not not many people would be looking for something like this. So it's yeah, uh, yeah. It's you have hard to, to find um, that crazy guy. You have to find that <laughs> one crazy yeah. guy, uh, which, which was you. So, yeah. uh, but it's um, <laughs> but she, she, so she was in fine shape. There was nothing. Oh yeah, perfect shape. Everything wrong. was uh, was perfect. Huh. I mean, some of the ropes were a bit old, but yeah. uh, that's uh, that's about it. I think everything was really good. Oh, and the electric stuff was a little bit shoddy. Yeah, but I'm a electronics engineer, so uh, that's my field. Perfect, uh, yeah. perfect. So that's that's good. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Yeah, I uh, I remember when they um, when the Volvo Ocean Race switched to like a one design uh, with the, the Volvo Ocean 65s that they still race, I think. Yeah, the Imoka 65. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. now they have a Mocha 60s and the Volvo Ocean 65s, and they sail I, I two different courses. I'm a little confused no, now. I th- with I the think, yeah, as, as far as I can understand, they had these uh, up until like 2005, and then they switched to the Imoka 65, which has the wings. Um, yeah, the hydrofoiling uh, wings. Yeah, that's the, yeah. those are the latest, the latest yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, and, and they've had those ever since I think, uh, since yeah. like two thousand and six or something like that. I don't think the Amokas were that early, but no, the, maybe uh, not. The, the Volvo Ocean One design, Volvo Ocean sixty fives, were. Um, oh, maybe there was something in between there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Because they, because um, yeah. cause this this they had one the tilting was keel. Yeah, oh, that was the Volvo. Yeah, the the both the Volvo seventies, the Volvo Ocean seventy. Was it? I okay. think it was the first that yeah, had maybe. a canting keel. Yeah. And then also the uh, the Volvo Ocean sixty fives, yeah. which was the first, if I remember correctly, yeah. the first um, one design class. But I remember that they they said. I think this was uh, kind of a one design class, um, because they were really like. St- all, all of these are are almost identical. All okay, the, are all they? the Volvo Ocean sixties they are almost identical from that uh, from ninety eight uh, race. Okay, yeah, so they all look quite uh, identical to this one. I bet you've looked yeah. at at several. And yeah, yeah, you're yeah, yeah, Pretty yeah. interested in how the others are, are yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've seen some of them have uh, they have they have uh, put a lot of stuff in and raised the roof a little bit and stuff like that. Hmm. Uh, just to make them more comfortable. Right. I I was uh, I was uh, I was doing a bit with this. I was thinking about uh, you know like a water tank, septic tank. Oh yeah. The <laughs> oh, so you don't have? Uh, no, no, yeah. I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was working on it, and then I went sailing with a with a buddy, and we got like fourteen knots, fifteen knots. Nice. And then I thought. I need more speed. I need to get rid of all the stuff I'm putting. <laughs> so I uh, just started <laughs> taking it back out. <laughs> nice. So uh, I'm not going to put uh, more stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. There's not going to be a septic tank here. Keep My it w- keep it true we'll to, go uh, to the, what she was made we'll for. go to port and uh, then go to the <laughs> toilet. There's always buckets, you know, so yeah. uh, you'll be fine. We'll go on the... 
on the back off the yeah off, off the, the stern off that's the stern, uh, yeah that was uh, um, i was i was in, uh, involved with the volvo ocean race for a very short time i was um in the uh, i applied to be in uh, one of the reporters the uh, one of the onboard reporters ah, okay, for cool. um yeah. for one of the races when was that so uh pff, ah, that must have been 2016 2017 yeah okay yeah no maybe so it's not that. so long ago but not it, so long but ago. it is kind of long ago uh, yeah kind <laughs> of <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. to me it feels very uh, very long but then yeah. Uh, yeah i mean every everybody just went went over the over the stern uh, you yeah know, yeah of course uh, yeah that's that the how everybody way. yeah everybody you can't go it. to the to the john uh, when we we're sailing that's yeah uh, that was like down below yeah. before the masts and uh, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. It, i gotta say it was a very nice yeah I, I have a i have a toilet of course yeah it's in, it's right in front of the mast here okay yeah, yeah. In, in the in the sail wardrobe which right is the four ship very cool yeah. that was the yeah i i, I replaced it with uh, I, there was a like a pump hand pump one yeah I put in a an electric one. Oh, okay, very yeah, nice. It's got less weight than the uh-huh. pump one, and uh, it's mm. a lot. It's a lot more comfortable to just push the button and then just yeah, yeah the pumping. You're feeling yeah. the crap going through the pump. You one. can feel the texture yeah, yeah, texture yeah. of the. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I remember yeah. the uh, the 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 toilet on the Volvo uh, Ocean 65s were. It was uh, carbon carbon fiber oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that toilet would be nice. yeah. which was pretty cool that's so, on my um, christmas uh, wish list yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was also gimbaled so it was you oh. know it would can't uh, that's that's too much fancy uh, we're just um, yeah, it's, that's yeah. too fancy but i mean nobody yeah. was using it anyway so no, uh, exactly. it was they could have just gotten rid of it yeah I think. this but this year when we sailed the shetland race uh we had a couple of guys who were uh, a little bit up in the in the years Mm. and they had uh, some issues so um, when we were like halfway and uh, it was really howling and one of the guys came to me and said I gotta take a piss I can't do it I I just can't (laughs) and I said okay let's take a break and uh, everybody just looked at me and I what do you mean can you can you take a break (laughs) but yeah let's take 10 minutes (laughs) <laughs> and they were like what the fuck is he talking about <laughs> and then I just turned down wind and uh, just got it from the side and just surfed on the waves yeah. and everything was just completely calm and quiet and smooth yeah. and and, uh, and everyone was on the on the back of the boat taking a piss oh everybody the whole crew was <laughs> <laughs> lined up everybody took the chance <laughs> oh that's great yeah uh, yeah, when you're uh, <laughs> when you're going upwind, uh, um, you know it feels so rough, and then you just turn downwind a little bit. It's amazing how yeah, yeah, it things just switches can, uh, everything off. Yeah, and I yeah. in a boat like this, which goes so fast, yeah, that yeah. different difference in the apparent wind must be must be huge. Yeah, because yeah, and and there was uh, we had waves crashing over the bow, and we had like uh, there were some some waves that were like five six meters and mm. we also had waves uh, mixed in which were two meters and also some one meters mixed in so it yeah. was really like a roller coaster you, ju- we, you would go really high up in the air and yeah. then you get the small waves just jogging you around and then you just drop down into the next wave and uh, you have waves crashing over the bow and people just holding on yeah. <laughs> it was rough it was, it was <laughs> quite rough yeah and then uh, when we turned around it, you kind of surf on the wave just on the side of the wave and you can just keep the elevation quite still and with the keel on this one it, it just keeps it straight so yeah it was and then you sail the same speed as the wind yeah. there's no wind there's no <laughs> waves there's everything is just quiet fantastic i think most of them were like maybe we should do this a little bit more yeah <laughs> just go back <laughs> yeah let's, let's continue on this course for a little bit longer yeah i was like yeah are you guys ready to <laughs> get, get back in the 
in the washing in the washer yeah and they're like yeah okay and then we we lost the sale the, you lost the, the sale the gym. yeah it, oh. uh, uh, we had uh we were probably saved by my backup uh um what do you call them like oh the, you're ba- you're a backup um uh, backstay that yeah you, uh, i have two extra backstays that i've mounted on just in case uh, <laughs> i think they saved us because the main backstay just slid out a little bit yeah and uh and uh, the for sale had a slack on the first day right and it it whipped the sail so the the sail would go would fill up with wind and then it would catch the wind in the front and the whole sail would go over on the other side and then come back and whip oh right and we whipped all the um, um uh what do you call the rods in the sail uh, the, um, the battens battens yeah. yeah they they were just whipped out of the sail Oh. They just flew out on the, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> flew out of the sail. Oh no! They were just ripped out, and oh. the sail ripped in half. And we just uh, we we <laughs> we had I had one guy who was a, an experienced sailor with me, mm. and one of the crew w- woke him up, and he was like, "You, you, you, and you, on my ass, and let's go and save the sail." <laughs> and they they uh, saved the sail and uh, got it. Uh, got it in and then we continued with just the main sail okay um, wow so and then in the in the morning hours like a couple of hours uh, later everybody mm. had the good sleep and the wind went down a bit yeah and then uh, we saw f- because we were uh, far ahead of all the other boats far ahead yeah, yeah. So, so we were like yeah we're gonna win this anyway <laughs> and, and then we saw one of the boats were actually like uh, just an hour behind us really and we were like okay let's, <laughs> let's get to work so we took the reef out of the main and then we got the storm sail uh, up in the bow nice and then uh, we just managed to pull away again so good job yeah good it was job pretty good yeah, yeah. and you uh, yeah you won the line honors yeah and, uh, with a uh, clear margin so, uh, yeah 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 i think i think that's a good victory for this boat because it it's cheaper than a lot of the other boats that were in the race <laughs> that's uh, that's <laughs> that's quite quite interesting yeah <laughs> that's very interesting uh, but it, the, the handicap uh, is impossible it's is it's not possible to win anything with this boat because of the handicap yeah you have to have volvo ocean racers uh, and brand new sails if you want to have a chance very true. Yeah. I, I I did look at the um, at the listings or the the, the rankings after yeah. this year, and and on the on the way to Shetland from Bergen, so the westward legs, um, y- you came in f- first. And the line honors. Th- yeah, you got the line honors. Yeah. but I think you came in last. Yeah, on we corrected dead time, last on right? corrected time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then and then the boat who who won overall. Yeah, it was like a twenty-eight foot or something. Like yeah, that. Amante, and I think yeah. like uh, those she guys was, are crazy to drive that boat. Across. It's like a motor sailor. Uh, yeah, right? yeah, It's yeah. like uh, <laughs> so. Of course, their their handicap is uh, you know at the far other end of the. But they deserve the scale. first place for that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm amazed they, at how they earned that shit. <laughs> yes, I was I was looking at them coming yeah. in, and I thought like, how can that thing go upwind at all? I was very impressed. Yeah, and across the sea with with um, I mean, it must be, have been unbearable. To, yeah, to be on board. Yeah, it was. Um, it was four four boats. Uh, it was twenty boats in total, starting, and four boats went home. Uh, before the night came because the wind was picking up too much and one of them broke the mast yeah yeah so it was, it was quite um, rough yeah. it was bad the uh yeah one broke a mast one of them had um f- uh, f- f- falconer falconer falcon had a yeah. they took in water through the oh. bow through and so the they had a flooding situation oh, that yeah. shorted the batteries, which oh. caused a fire on board. And oh, it, was, it was really bad for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and because um, yeah. I guess you you guys might have missed this because you were so far ahead of the rest of the fleet, but we yeah, were picking maybe. up this on the radio. Oh, okay. And yeah, um, we didn't uh, we didn't even get the we didn't even see the other boats on the IAS. Uh, yeah. Eventually, so 
We, yeah, you we guys didn't were, have a clue. Uh, about you guys were just flying. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, but no, it was a it was a bad um, it was a bad one. It was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things yeah. happening. So um, sounds uh, not fun. Yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, <laughs> it was pretty rough. But yeah, yeah no, you guys um, you guys made it. So w- well done. The um, and did you have did you have any other damages on board from from uh, that? No, that not a, this time. <laughs> yeah, you were fine. <laughs> the last race we had, uh, I had like a, a forty kilo Rockna anchor on the bow last mm. year, and that oh. broke off and uh, started banging on the hull. Really? I had to rescue it in the middle of the night in uh, these huge waves. <laughs> oh, that sounds. Uh, yeah. So we don't we don't bring that one. Yeah, before the race anymore. <laughs> Jeez, that sounds very dangerous. How, yeah, uh, I was cheered on by the other guys that when I after I saved it, they were like, "Holy fuck!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that a, sounds almost like the superpower stuff. Like, the <laughs> how the fuck did you do that? Yeah, that sounds <laughs> almost forty impossible. kilo anchor on the outside of the hull. Yeah, yeah, but I've, I've, you know, I've, I've installed the anchor myself. Mm. And uh, during that process, I've I've handled it so many times that I've I kind of know how to how to grab it. Yeah, yeah so. I guess <laughs> um, you know maybe because I'm thinking, man, that must be difficult with all the movement going on. I was hanging on the there. outside of the yeah. bow. Oh man! Uh, by the by the by the um, first day. Yeah. First day, one hand and the anchor in the other hand. Jesus. <laughs> that's like some uh, superhero. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, uh, the other guys were like, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, if you timed it with the waves, that's what you did. Yeah, you pro- yeah that's, that's probably what I did. Yeah, yeah, because it didn't feel so heavy. So that's probably what uh, happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's a good trick. I didn't think of that uh, at the time. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, just uh, instinctual. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was sleeping in the in the fore ship uh, when the anchor broke loose, oh, because crap. I kn- I knew there was something not right about the anchor. I had like two straps, one on the outside on the chain and one inside even inside the boat because the chain goes down inside. Oh, okay. So I had tied it really really well, but it still managed to, because the waves were coming up and lifted the anchor out of the out of the holder yeah that's uh yeah. that's scary so, it's so i was um, sleeping in the foreship and then i heard the banging on the outside and i was like fuck yeah oh. that's uh, that's my cue <laughs> and i and i went as i went out we had a skipper that we that were like uh, experienced uh, skipper he was just coming into the boat he, and he said hey do you have a bucket like, what do you need that for? I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Why do you go into the boat and uh, use the bucket? <laughs> I mean, just throw up uh, over the side. <laughs> very true, very true. Never go down inside. Yeah, making the vomit smell for everyone inside. Yeah, yeah uh, no, no thanks. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Man, that anchor story is... Um that's crazy. We we were actually <laughs> discussing this very same thing on uh, in we have the uh, Falcon our uh, yeah uh, you know far you the 65. In, uh, we also have a super big. I'm not sure yeah. how heavy it is. Probably 40 kilos at least. Yeah, maybe the same one. Uh, uh, yeah, Rockna up there and yeah. um, and we because we've been ta- we've been discussing this a little bit. Like, geez, that's a lot of weight. Like all out on this moving. Yeah, and, it, and it's but it's not the weight that gets it because it, when you crash down into the wave yeah. with the bow, it li- the wave lifts the anchor out. Yeah, uh, it, it catches a lot of water, so uh, that's that's the main thing that happened to to my anchor. It was lifted out of the holder, right, and then it just went over to the side. And yeah, just, just f- yeah over there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, we and and we were v- we we looked at this uh, recently in like a 360 video that somebody yeah. went forward on the oh, yeah. bow as yeah. as Falcon was sailing like pretty crazy, and we yeah. were just looking at the anchor in that footage. It's like holy crap! It's like surfing yeah. on yeah, the water yeah. as it comes down, yeah. and then it just grabs like a. Sp- scoop of water as oh, it comes yeah, back yeah, up yeah, exactly. as well yeah. so it's uh, yeah uh, it's not uh, we just uh, after that we just put it inside and uh, we just kept it inside and yeah. if we need it you know we're far out at sea you're not gonna need it good call in that position but uh, yeah yeah now i just have now i just drop it and uh, 
I use like a small racing anchor for when I'm going rough. So, yeah. Good idea. And I'll just keep the big one inside if I'm if I'm going to take it with me. Yeah, makes a lot more yeah. sense for the balance of the the trim of the boat as well. Yeah, keep yeah. the anchor down below. Yeah, so, it's, uh, it's not made for the anchor. No, no. <laughs> but were were there any damages to the bow from the? Yeah, the anchor? anchor managed to punch a hole through the through through the outer layer of the hull. This wow. is a this this boat is Kevlar sandwich, so mm. it's uh, it's uh, epoxy and Kevlar, and then there is like two centimeters of carbon foam, and then there is uh, epoxy Kevlar as well on the inside. Okay. It's like a s- sandwich construction. Right. So it's two bulletproof layers with carbon foam between. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, it's quite sturdy. So, yeah. But the, the anchor was, uh, you know, the point, the end. Yeah. Managed to point push a, a hole through the outer uh, layer. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I'm not, not, not too surprised uh, about yeah, that. It was quite, uh, yeah, quite quite uh, f- a lot of forces at play i think yeah yeah that's uh that's cool um yeah i'm no i'm really uh, very impressed with like how how great the boat looks and how sturdy everything feels and cuz one of the one of the things that they they said when uh, when the Volvo Ocean race were changing to this um true like one design class with the 65s were that the boats that were built like the open classes like like this one who was built kind of like like box rules like it has to be yeah. such and such dimensions and yeah exactly yeah but otherwise you know the teams built their own boats like they yeah. built them themselves and yeah. and they they said that that was uh i remember somebody saying that that was like an unsafe way of doing it because many teams built the boats like as light as they possibly could like the the goal was to make a boat that could race around the world once yeah like th- that that was not done with this uh with this class because uh, it was because of the sydney race uh the sydney to uh what's it called sydney hobart the race. sydney hobart race yeah it was uh when was that like 94 5 something like that i don't remember uh, yeah it's something like that and then uh, you know they had like all yeah a lot of issues on that race yeah and so the box rules were really strict and you had to really build it sturdy oh nice so this is a, one of the sturdiest boat when when this one was racing it was not about getting around it was about coming first yeah but with the next one like the Imokas, it was really more about surviving the trip because uh, you know breaking down costs a lot of time yeah. So so it it uh, the next race the next boat was uh, the next class was just more about not breaking down. Yeah. This one just went and crashed around and survived everything. Yeah. So they didn't have any issues with these. But cool. the next the next class they had the laminations and stuff. Right. I think the canting keel was probably. Uh, quite rough on the construction as well that's a very complicated yeah. piece of kit uh, very heavy and yeah, yeah. and I, I think it caused like delaminations in the area uh, around the keel right okay yeah. so yeah. I, I think that really was quite brutal on the boats yeah uh, I, I'm not sure about the wings I think they also are quite uh, I've seen I've seen wings just breaking off and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, this this one is really sturdy, but it, it doesn't have the same speed. But yeah. No, the wings really, yeah. uh, the foils really add a, a a lot of speed. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was uh, that was the the Vendée Globe, the Hugo Boss. Oh yeah, that's broke really cool. one of the foils, wasn't oh, that? Oh, did it? Yeah. Right, and they uh, okay. he, he yeah. like he was super fast on like one tack, but then it's very slow <laughs> on the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it last at least it didn't uh, compromise the hull. That's true. Yeah, yeah. because I've seen that, that's and that's uh, that's not so fun. Yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I also saw one boat that broke in half because of the, I think they just pulled the stays too hard. And it broke on in the middle. Really? Yeah. Oh, jeez. But I don't think that was uh, this class. I think it was the next one. Yeah. Uh, huh. 
Are there, uh, you know, how, how many of these boats are, are left, do you know? From I, I, there were, like, I don't know how many were built, like 20 or something. Like fif- yeah. 15 or 20. I've only seen, like, six or, s- yeah, six or eight, eight. I think, the, you know, the Germans that I bought this from, mm. they have two more. Okay. So they had three. All right. Yeah. Cool. And then there's one in Australia. Uh, so that's four. And I know there's one in the US. So that's five. And I that's I think that's uh, all I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. So five of five and this one. So yeah. Six. So, uh, so six there. boats I know of. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And one one went on a rock. Uh, yeah. I know. And uh, I think this one, uh, you know, the guys who sold this to me, this has the original aluminum mast. Uh, but they changed it to carbon masts uh, at the point. Oh, okay. But I think the guys who had this, uh, both the German guys, they, they actually broke the carbon mast of one of the other boats they had. And they took the one from this one on and put it on that one. Oh, okay. And they put back the original aluminum mast on this one. It's okay. a really good mast, but it's a bit heavier. Yeah. yeah. Is it uh, the original? So did that sail on the yeah, this original the, race? Uh, yeah, this was in the, in the original Volvo Ocean race. Okay. Yeah. Huh, I'm surprised they didn't have carbon masts in the first yeah, race. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it yeah. was a little bit uh, maybe before the... Ahead of the time of the carbon mast. Yeah, maybe. Cool. So, um, so, 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 what was it used for then by the the German company? Oh, they, that they had like events and uh, you know team building events and stuff. Okay, stuff. so like day racing, yeah. basically, and yeah, yeah. cool. So, uh, so, so, what have you? Uh, so, you. This is now your uh, family boat, I guess. It's uh, yeah, your cruiser <laughs> kind of, uh, and also occasional. I have, uh, racer. I have a, I have a crew, but they're a bit young still. Right. Yeah. So uh, it it hasn't been uh, used uh, by the family so far. Uh, right. Just like a couple of trips, but uh, no. We we had planning. We had a plan to use it on the. In the summer, but uh, my missus got a little bit issues with the back, so ah. so we had to. Uh, she had to uh, chill. Yeah. So uh, see. We'll, we'll see next year if if we can. Uh, yeah. Use it. It's gonna be. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, so you have four kids, right? Yeah. And and h- how old are they? Uh, uh, twelve, ten, and uh, eight, and eight. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, they're gonna be a good crew. That's a good crew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> Very nice. Couple of years, then uh, then we're gonna go. <laughs> yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be so so fun. That's great. Are they? Do they like the boat? Is they? Do they think oh, it's yeah, fun to be? Oh yeah, yeah. They they love it. But uh, it, if we don't have the coverage for the iPad, then it's not. Uh, oh so right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to I guess, stay uh, near the coast uh, <laughs> so they I can guess. play play on their gaming uh, pods. Got it. Uh, Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you've um, you know you, you've you've done some modifications here to the to the boat to make it a little more comfortable. The nice hardwood floors is a really really yeah. nice touch, and uh, and I love these bunks that you've uh, built. <laughs> the build, yeah, I just I just took two standard IKEA bunks and just put it in. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's they're they're just uh, mounted in the same on the same brackets as the original bunks. And the original box are just folded up on the wall behind them. Yeah. It's, uh, they are very popular on the Shetland race. Yeah, There's always someone in the bunk when mm. we're going to Shetland. <laughs> <There's> always, <laughs> always someone. Yeah, so they, uh, look, yeah they look fantastic. So it's a, yeah. you know, a, a great like, full you know, yeah. size IKEA bed in, in, <laughs> yeah. the, in the mounts of like a bunk bed. So you can, yeah. there we yeah. go. <laughs> you can fold them up like this. Fold so it up. Just, and, uh, so you get, get them out of the way. And then get yourself uh, squeezed into the, uh, the yeah. whole sides there. That's, uh, that's, that's <laughs> really neat. 
And uh, and there you go, underneath um, the box, you were telling me about the water ballast tanks. The water ballast, uh, uh, the water ballast uh, I'm uh, fixing that up. That was one of the things that were not uh, so good when I bought it. Hmm. Uh, I actually, there was like a, a centerpiece with three, three really big pipes going into it from each. Uh, f- there are three ballast tanks on each side. And it's uh, oh. 2,500 liters. Hmm. each uh, each side um, wow so it's a, uh, that's like 2.6 or 2.7 tons yeah um, but uh, and then there were there were pipes going to the other side so you would just uh, to switch the ballast over to the other side you would just open the valves and the water would rush over yeah and uh, the piece in the middle was made by aluminium and I, I just uh, wanted mm. to see if it was sturdy. So I took a screwdriver and just punched a hole in it. Okay. And I thought, okay, <laughs> well, that's going. <laughs> well, you were, you were, it just went straight through. Yeah, it the, just went straight through, yeah. Oh, man. And it corroded a bit, so. That's, um, yeah. that's scary. Suddenly you have, uh, you know, two and a half tons of water uh, in your boat. That's yeah, uh, it's not very not nice. Not so good, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so we fixed the. I've, I've just taken everything out, and there was a generator with a pump to fill the ballast tanks as well. I took right. that out, so I, I got rid of a lot of weight, and I'm um, just putting on a small electric pump powered by some batteries that I put in. Uh, yeah. It should be enough to fill the tanks. So nice. We'll yeah, because that that's, um, that's seawater, right? So you're just pulling yeah, yeah, it yeah. in from the from the yeah. sea, and off you go. Yeah, I, yeah. Have, uh, I have some big through hole fittings mm. under the floor here so uh, i uh, i guess yeah to uh, yeah. to fill them speedily that's yeah. uh do, do you do you drain them when you go downwind is that the idea to to, to lighten the boat a little no, bit no i just uh whenever you you going with a side wind you just fill them yeah uh, and then uh, if you're going upwind i'm not sure um, how much you would put in maybe you can fill just the front one or something yeah. i haven't really we went from um, we went after i when i just bought the boat i sailed it from uh, germany to norway and oh. uh, we we uh, we came up to skagen and there we broached one time ouch uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that no fun. joke on a boat like this <laughs> yeah I, I was like oh well i had it for two days that was fun <laughs> and uh and then we just uh we we just stabilized with the with the mast almost in the water oh geez. and i was like wow well, this looks like it's gonna be fine actually so and then uh hmm. we just made sure everyone was still on board and it just came up and we continued <laughs> okay so it was no no, no issue yeah Oh. It was not very scary at all, actually. Wow, I um, guess the you know it's uh, like you said at the top here that it's it's not really a lot of stuff no, here. There's not a yeah. lot of things to break, at least inside. Uh, yeah, there's n- not much to uh, yeah, yeah, not much to break. So <laughs> um, so after after that we went uh, on to from Skagen or we crossed over to Kristiansand. Yeah, and we had a really strong uh, headwind from about uh, almost straight from the side, a little bit from the front, mm. and then we filled the ballast tank uh, because that was before I knew how bad it was. Right, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was really good. Uh, we had, but it didn't go a lot faster, but it it was very comfortable. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but that was uh, upwind. So I think uh, downwind, if you have the wind from the side, mm. it, uh, but it has to be a really strong wind. Yeah, to to use the. Yeah, I think so. To use the ballast. Yeah. The German guys I bought it from, they said they they never used it because uh, it was overkill. It wouldn't gain you that much. Like over a long period of time, you can maybe have like one or two knots extra yeah so it's uh it's to win a race but it's not uh it's not for me to win a race yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess that you know there's it's a lot of complexity and uh 
uh, you know, ha having a lot of water sloshing back and forth uh, in the boat is also a little risky. So no, I can understand no, why. It is, when you feel it in the side, it's uh, it's it's quite okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Cool. Yeah, it does. It doesn't. It sounds like a lot, but uh, when you just if you just fill it, uh, if you just fill one side with with water, mm. and you, you just at the kai or something. It, it really doesn't tilt the boat so much. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. the keel is uh, so heavy on the... Right. Yeah, so right. It's, it doesn't really do a lot. I so see. You can hardly even feel it. Okay. But when you're sailing, uh, it, it makes the whole experience a lot more comfortable. You have more weight, it's more stable. Yeah. And you go more straight. The wind doesn't push you down okay. so much. Yeah, so, nice. So it's quite nice. Yeah. Huh. How how heavy is the boat? The it's whole fourteen tons. Fourteen tons. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, that's, that's, and the keel is like seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, that's yeah. um that's nuts. Like uh, Ispion, you know my uh, it's one forty eight that's parked just. Oh yeah, uh, that's probably twice. Just south yeah. of here is uh, like eighteen tons. Eighteen. So, oh yeah, uh, it's not uh, so much. Yeah. So uh, no, it's not not huge, but yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, but it's more. It's not. Well, how much is the keel? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think it's like forty, maybe 40. like forty percent of that. It's like really. really oh, it's heavy. that big. Yeah. And so it's heavier than this one. So, uh huh. It might be. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it might actually. Yeah. Yeah. You're like it, nine? No, eight tons. In the keel. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. It's quite heavy. Yeah. yeah. It's more of a. You know, more of a kind of it's it's far from a full keel, but I guess yeah. compared to this, it's more of a full keel uh, yeah. kind of shape. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, this is just a wing, and uh, yeah. and a bulb. Bulb at the end. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Bulb at f at uh, four meters. Yeah, yeah. And then just a massive. Uh, it's just a massive uh, stainless steel wing. It's it's like uh, I think it's about uh, maybe one meter, maybe a little bit more, like one twenty. Oh right. Uh, and it's uh, at the thickest. It's like maybe fifteen or twenty centimeters. Wow. And it's massive steel, like stainless steel. Yeah. <laughs> Just one big piece of stainless steel that's milled to a wing. Oh my. And man. then at the bottom of it, there's the keel. It's and really, really uh, sturdy stuff. Yeah, yeah. that that must have been expensive. To yeah, make. I think I hope, that. I hope you never have really to replace that. No, one. I, I was thinking <laughs> when when I I had it up the, in um, in this spring, I had the boat out of the water to oh yeah put new anti falling and everything, and uh, I I looked at the wing and I was like shit, that's uh, that's one expensive uh, steel <laughs> wing, and yeah. it goes into the. You can see here it's it's uh, it's kind of uh, constructed into the hull in a very cool manner. Okay. It's, uh, we have uh, like like this. Um, what do you call it? Yeah, there's like a mast support. Uh, Scott. Uh, beam. Kind of oh, a uh, bulkhead. Yeah. Yeah, bulkheads. Yeah. So we have one bulkhead in front of the keel, and mm. uh, one bulkhead just aft of the keel. And and the keel is just constructed into the bulkheads as well, so it's really really sturdy. I think these two bulkheads uh, with the mast as well. I think this is like the, the the center of the boat. Yeah. Which everything is just connected to. Yeah. And <laughs> and just aft of the of the keel, you can see there's in the roof here. There's a little round window. Mm. And uh, just below the, just just below it, if I can pick up this pick up the floor floor boards, you can see there's a there's a huge steel bolt here. Oh yeah, this one. Oh yeah, that is. And you uh, can lift the entire boat just by that one. That is the largest, uh, like cutter pin I've ever seen in my life I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah just put a big strap on that one and, put and you it can lift the window the and just lift the entire boat of that's the incredible water. wow yeah that is sturdy nuts. stuff yeah 
Is it the the bulb? Is that lead? Do you know? Is it? I think it it's uh, it's filled with lead. I think it's uh, some other metal on the outside and then lead inside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there a couple of boats? Um, oh, that, that was probably maybe earlier, but that used uranium for their uh, keels. Oh, that would be cool. I, I don't think, know. I think uranium. That, yeah. I it's like a nuclear-powered uh, yeah. sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, but that was. I think that was probably the uh, the older ones. I, oh, think, I hope yeah. this has it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so, but it would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Um, I think it was outlawed at some point because it's yeah. like it's <laughs> almost. <laughs> You know, well, yeah. I mean, it's radioactive. That's yeah, exactly, thing, yeah, But it's also, <laughs> it's also like almost twice the density of lead. Yeah. <laughs> so you get like a really competitive advantage. Um, yeah. And it's probably cheap as well because the nuclear plants want to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's so kind it's of you know waste. Too. So, yeah. uh, but I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think yeah that was <laughs> that was outlawed. popular in uh, in Russia probably. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's a nice uranium kill. <laughs> great yeah, great that's advantage. Cool. <laughs> I think I think one of the um Tabali and one of his Panduics had I think the uh, like the French government hooked him up with uh, oh, yeah. with the uranium yeah, kill. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, I think I think that was that was uh, before this um, the era of this boat. Yeah, I think I I don't think it's uh, uranium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How how is it to, you know, you 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 got the boat also a, a, a steal. To, uh, you got it at a really good price. That was very oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. But <laughs> but like the, the like the upkeep. Oh yeah, is it it's expensive, expensive to yeah. own? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Like you you can't really walk into any marine store or chandlery yeah. and just like <laughs> buy the regular things that normal people buy. It's uh, you know, especially up on deck, you know, things are pretty, Yeah, things I are d- big. I, in, I have, uh, like, a, um, I've started, like, a, a, a shop for boat equipment. Oh, yeah? And I'm the only customer. <laughs> but, I, I, but I've got a pretty good, decent revenue. <laughs> <laughs> I think my suppliers are happy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I had to do that, and, and uh, the boat is also registered to a company, so it, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it makes it a little bit uh, less expensive to run it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I have to 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 make the tax people happy. I have to rent it out more yeah. than I spend on it. Mm. I have to earn more than I uh, than I use. Yeah, so <laughs> that's how they, uh, they 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 want they want their money. So uh, yeah, the, the tax yeah. people don't want to lose money. So no, they 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 are not the financing my uh, my hobby. No, <laughs> uh, it has True. to be a business case. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but so far it's uh, you know I'm I've made enough money to break even. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That's yeah. pretty good. Have yeah, you had yeah. to do any any kind of major, uh, you know, major jobs with? Uh, I, I think the 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 first the most expensive thing on my list right now that's the new sales. Oh yeah, yeah they are quite expensive for this one. I guess it's like a third of the price I paid for the boat for just one sale. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were they? Uh, what are you looking at? Are they like laminated racing sails? Oh yeah, um, yeah. It has yeah. to be a good one. Yeah, I was looking at the Dinema sails. I think yeah. that's interesting. That's um, um because they, they they but I think they will probably be cheaper in the future. So I think I will wait a little bit with the Dinema because it's quite new, making sales from Dinema. Yeah, is it purely Dinema or? Uh? Um, yeah, I think it's quite uh, quite purely Dinema. Okay, because yeah. we have on on Ispion, um we have Hydronet, which is you know Dacron and yeah, Dynema Dacron, yeah, woven yeah. together. Yeah, which um, you know yeah. they. They keep the shape very good, yeah. Keep the shape and, and, and very Dinema, well. Dinema doesn't keep the shape as well, but it's really strong. Yeah. And you can make the sails quite light, and it's also uh, uh, like naturally UV uh, tolerant. Yeah. So uh, you can they they 
you can have a dynamo sale for a lot longer but it will not have the 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 optimal shape like you get from dextron or or yeah. uh, carbon or something like that true but I think for but they the, are they are the, also very expensive. <laughs> the uh, the dynamo cells are really expensive. Yeah. Now, it's just because they don't make them so much. Okay. Oh, right. you think the prices will yeah, will drop on them? Dynamo ropes are really cheap compared to the strength and everything. Quite cheap. Yeah. 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 I guess compared to the what they can pull. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the the price is gonna go down on that one. So I'm I'm holding on a little bit longer for that one. Right. Hoping. Yeah, yeah. Your, uh, so, so your sales are, are, are fine, except do you have a head sale or did you manage to save the one that no, you broke? No, that the... one went, but uh, I got a new one from the guys in Germany. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because they have they have a better business case than me, mm. so they have sponsors. Oh, uh, so yeah. So they get free sales and stuff. I'm not sure if they get free sales, but they uh, I, at least they got uh, more revenue from their business than me. Yeah, this is not my job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have it as a as a full time job. So yeah, uh, and they also sell. Uh, you know, those guys are really professional. Right. Speed sailing. Speed sailing. The DE, I think, for Germany. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. They're really, really, really professional. You should uh, you should definitely go and have them on your podcast. Yeah, maybe I'll yeah, I'll, I'll check them out. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Do they have do they have more boats or do they just have the two now? No, or? they have the those two and they also have a couple of regatta sailboats that are smaller. Okay. Um I, I think it's one with the like the rounded bow. I'm not sure what brand it is. Oh yeah, the the minis. Is that yeah. one you mostly find with the rounded bows? Yeah, I think they're like thirty footers, thirty five yeah, okay. footers, something like that. Yeah, really cool boats. Yeah, they look. Yeah. Uh, look they strange, look weird, but they go fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah, hmm. and they they do a lot of sailing, and they sell boats and they sell equipment, and they're really professional. So okay, nice. Yeah. yeah, do you have a good relationship with them after having bought the boat and yeah, dealing I, with them? And you know, I was really happy, and I think they were really happy with me because I. Paid, uh, paid the money and did everything I should. Yeah. But then the documentation was uh, cumbersome. To get this boat into Norway, I have to have it have it registered to the to the ship register. Yeah. And there was like uh, uh, apostille and notarius. Uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Like a lot of paperwork, <laughs> and it, it it I think it took like a half a year of paperwork. Yeah. To get it uh, done. But in the end, we we did get it done. I had to get like uh, emails from far, and uh, oh from, really? Uh, wow. Yeah. But yes, it's a regatta boat. Yeah. <laughs> because the the guys, you know, the bureauc- bureaucrats, they were like, "Yeah, is it is it really a a, a regatta boat? Is it a, a specially built for regattas?" Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I have. I have uh, documentation on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. we don't accept YouTube as documentation. Oh God! Like, okay, yeah. so you, you've seen the boat, you've seen the videos from the Volvo Ocean Race, but no. that's not enough. It's not enough. Doesn't no, fit into the. No, we need the, uh, to have it on a pa- piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I had no, to get a piece of paper from far, yeah. where it's where they said. Yeah, it's a regatta boat. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's so... Uh, and the the yeah. bureaucrat, she was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 it's uh it's it's that's rough man i uh i, I went through the same thing with with east beyond getting her oh, yeah. to uh to norway and uh yeah i think that took a year i think oh yeah that whole <laughs> process and um and one of one of the things that you have to do is that you need to document like every change of ownership oh yeah throughout yeah. the history did you I, have to do that as I well was lucky with this? Because, uh, because the guys in germany they had it registered in the german shipping register oh so they had everything yeah, so so as long as you have that then you've the the Norwegian register. They will trust the German register, right? To have done everything previous to registering it there. Nice. So so uh, that was enough for them. Yeah. So I was lucky in that sense. Yeah. And then I had to make the sign. 
Oh yeah, that's your uh, your call sign. My call sign. It's on the JXPB. Very cool. Very and cool uh, call sign. I had it had to be physically, uh, you know, I, I painting it wasn't enough. Yep. It has it has to be like physically uh, uh, machined etched into uh, the boat. Into yeah. The boat. So it was like, uh, yeah, but yeah, I can't etch anything into this boat because it's made of. Uh, Corey, yeah, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not possible to machine anything. Uh -huh. I've tried, but uh, it just breaks the drill. It just uh, the, oh, the man, drill really? bit just goes. Yeah, it doesn't work. Wow. Yeah. It's like it's Kevlar. It doesn't machine. Yeah. <laughs> so I I actually machined the the call sign into a uh, small piece of aluminum, and then I stuck the aluminum to the boat. Nice. And I said, now that's a piece of the hull, and it's been machined. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That looks uh, looks really nice. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, what's the uh, what what's the story behind the name? Lol Lol Mao. Mao. Oh yeah, that's uh, laughing out loud my ass off. <laughs> yeah. Lol Mao. Yeah, I like the <laughs> I like the humor of it, but it's also uh, the first letter in uh, in me and my missus and my, our kids' names. That's so really it's, cool. Uh, Anette, Morten, Luke, Oliver, Leon, and uh, Otilia. So it's that's, Lol Mao. Uh, that's yeah. very cool. So that's uh, that's where that's from. Yeah. But it's a fun name. It's a fun name. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, good to see it, you know, when uh, when you guys uh, passed everybody for the, at the Shetland race, and you just yeah. have you zoom in past and you see the Lul Mao uh, <laughs> and it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty yeah, good. yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Did you now? Did you do that on purpose this year at the Shetland race? You, I think you were across the start line last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. do that on purpose just to pass everybody? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's it's. Uh, I think it's a little bit social to you know, <laughs> say hello to everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah, the guys I was sailing with, they were like, "Oh fuck, we gotta we gotta get to the start line." Right. Like, ah, relax. <laughs> we'll get there. It's fine. Yeah, I guess if you won the start, you wouldn't see anybody because you would just be yeah, exactly, yeah. everybody would be behind yeah. you. So and and we we would come dead last in the rated uh, results anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter. Tough we're not, to we're, go we're gonna make line on us and we're gonna lose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like both uh, both ends of the uh, of the spectrum. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Uh, it's uh, that's uh, that's what we're competing for it's the line on us yeah yeah Very last nice. year we had under pearl and they yeah. beat us with like half an hour and it was because of the anchor oh that we had to save right. the anchor in the middle of the night that cost us like maybe uh, 20 minutes and we also went a little bit far north in the start right so we just lost barely to oh. Yeah, I remember looking at the tracking, you and uh, Ender Pearl coming in there really, really yeah. close. So. They just copied all our moves as well. Oh, really yeah? annoying. We we're like, oh, we're just so close behind them. Let's tack. <laughs> and they tacked. Uh, oh, fuck, they also tacked. Let's tack again. And we ta <laughs> they tacked. So we were like tacking huh. <laughs> back and forth. And they were just copying all our moves. Damn. Like, Damn, they were just saving them. Bastards. Wow. <laughs> yeah, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That was sad. But that's a. Uh, she's bigger too, right? Oh, yeah, than this 75 one? foot. And 75, uh, yeah. A lot more expensive. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, that's a. What, what is. She, she's a pretty new. Yeah, really nice boat. I was yeah. on board and had a tour. Nice. And uh, the, the woman who gave me the tour, she was like, when we're on the starboard tack, we had to sit in uh, in this salon to have our <laughs> prosecco. <laughs> and well, then when we were on port tack, we had to move over over to the other salon. Yeah. And then the, here's the kitchen where the chef prepared our meals. <laughs> I was like, and we and we even went outside for a bit to get a little bit of. Uh, Oversea on us, <laughs> so it was quite crazy. Oh man! I was like, damn. <laughs> Meanwhile, here you are cooking on your your little gas uh, stove and. Yeah, yeah, I I I don't eat like hot food when I'm doing regattas. I, that's I this this year and last year, last year mm. uh, the crew they came on board with like dry tech, uh, like Mexican food. Yeah, I was like, that's. 
that's gonna backfire on you <laughs> <laughs> and it did uh, and, and this year uh, the the guy who who is an experienced racer actually yeah. or sailor he's like I've got enough uh, pasta salad with chicken and olives and shit for everyone oh wow I was like yeah sounds nice it's gonna backfire <laughs> and it did I think I cleaned huh. like I, I I cleaned pasta salad from the uh, from the deck like five or six times. <laughs> it was in the ropes and stuff. Like, oh no! Don't puke on the ropes. <laughs> oh no no yeah! Please don't yeah. puke on the ropes. Yeah. That's, so uh, uh, it, that backfired, and and there was enough even for the second day. Uh, but then everybody had tasted it twice, <laughs> and uh, it didn't uh, it didn't have the same appeal. <laughs> but oh, I, man. I took. <laughs> I had some on the second day as well. All right. <laughs> like, you guys not gonna have any? <laughs> Plenty for you. Yeah. Man, is it is she uh, like rough in, out in the in the waves? Is it because you would think like you know what's she's a, bouncing a lot. Yeah. 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 She's a pretty big big boat, but then uh, I guess like she a, has a really flat. Yeah. You know, forefront, flat, and, and uh, she probably. Yeah. Just move. There's a lot of uh, fast movement. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't move like a heavy boat at all. Yeah. Just uh, it's like a, a like a dinghy. Right. Yeah. Big like dinghy. A sailing dinghy. Yeah. It's, it's just bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, it's um different different levels of uh, comfort for sure. We were uh, rafted up next to Andrew Pearl uh, oh, last yeah. year uh, yeah. during the Shetland race, and uh, yeah, they were really fancy fancy oh, yeah. fancy folks uh, on board yeah, yeah no beautiful yeah. really nice i i, I the, the the furlers and everything is the carbon mast on that boat oh they have a carbon mast oh yeah, yeah oh, oh nice yeah, it's really it, the boom is like uh i think the mainsail goes in the in the boom oh the, okay on the pearl. i don't th- think it goes in the mast i think it goes down on the boom all oh, right, and then uh, just everything is so expensive. Yeah, everything is chrome, huge. It was so shiny, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, we uh, we didn't look uh, that bright next to next to her. So, yeah, <laughs> and the pearl is a quite cool name as well. It's like it's from like uh, uh, Roblox or something like that. Like, okay. Uh, I don't. The Ender I Pearl is like know. a weapon that one of the computer games that my kids play. Oh really? Yeah, okay. Right. So <laughs> we have the Black Pearl, which is like the um, uh, pirates, pirates of the Caribbean yeah. ship. We have the Black Pearl, and then then there's the Ender Pearl, which is like this pearl that's a weapon in one of these uh, kids' games. Oh uh, right, nice. that's a quite cool <laughs> cool name. Huh, cool. I didn't. I when I heard it first, yeah. I was like Ender Pearl. What's that? Yeah, a weird didn't, name. I didn't but really now think. Now that I know what it is, it's it's up there with Lil Mao. <laughs> yeah, yeah, up there. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, great. Well, um, this uh, this has been uh, this has been really great, Morten. Thank you so much for taking the time and for for having me aboard the boat. It's been really cool. Uh, cool to see and to talk to you. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have this talk uh, a lot. I bet. Yeah. Every harbor I go to, uh, it's like somebody is gonna. I'm sure. Yeah. Have a chat. Yeah, I love that. I'm very chatty. So. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. No, it's definitely like you said, a, a conversation piece. And uh, yeah, looking yeah. forward to um, you know to race against you uh, next year as well during the Shetland race. Oh so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's gonna be fun. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks to Forbes Horton Yachts for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. To get in touch and to see his listings, visit ForbesYachts.com. Also, thanks to SailTies for sponsoring the show. Check them out at SailTies.net and download their free app for Android and iOS. On the Win is the podcast about sailing created by 59 Degrees North and hosted by me, August Tanberg, Andy Schell and Emma Garshagen. The show is mixed and produced in Maryland by Lee Cumberland. Episode artwork and website show notes are done by Laura Parent in San Francisco. 
The intro theme music was written and performed by former podcast guest Cameron Dale, while the outro music you're hearing now is by our friends, the Storm Weather Shanty Choir, who have also been on the show. We love hearing from you, so please send us a note at holdfast at 59-north.com, and you can also help us out a lot by reviewing the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. It really does help. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, hold fast. And when me mahani was all gone on liquor and the horse, I made up me mind that I was inclined to go to see no more. No more, no more, to go to see no more. I made up me mind that I was inclined to go to see no more. As I was walking down the street, I met sweet Angeline. She said, come home with me, me lad, and we'll have a cracking time. But when I awoke, it was no joke, I found I was all alone. My silver watch and my money too And my whole bloody gear was gone Was gone, was gone My whole bloody gear was gone It was when I awoke it was no joke For my whole bloody gear was gone As I was walking down the street, I met Big Rapper Brown. I asked him if he would take me in, and he looked at me with a frown. He said, last time you was paid up with me, you talked up no score. But I'll take your advance and I'll give you a chance to go to see once more. Once more, once more, to go to see once more. I'll take your advance and I'll give you a chance to go to see once more. Sometimes we're catching whales, me lads, but mostly we get none. With a twenty foot oar in every pour from five o'clock in the morn. And when daylight's gone and the night's coming on, we rest up on our oars. And oh boys, you wish that you was dead Or snug with the girls ashore Ashore, ashore Or snug with the girls ashore Oh boys, you wish that you was dead Or snug with the girls ashore Come all you seafaring lads that listen to me song When you go a big boating boys make sure you do not go wrong You take my tip when you come off a trip don't go with any horns But get married instead and have all night in bed And go to sea no more No more, no more To go to sea no more Get married instead and have all night in bed And go to sea no more To 
see no more. Get married instead and have all nights in bed and go to see no more.